Alright, good afternoon students. And you are welcome to Management Accounting 1 lecture. It's C203, which is a three unit course. Um, by name, I'm Dr. Oji Akiyomi. Today, in uh, our Management Accounting 1 class, we'll be looking at the topic cost, volume, profit analysis. Cost, volume, profit analysis. And I promise you it's going to be an interesting uh, time because this topic is a very good topic for you as students. So we are looking at cost, volume, profit analysis. Essentially, as the topic implies, we are looking at relationship between the volume of production or level of activities, the cost, and then the level of profit. Proper understanding of this topic is crucial for the uh, good performance of every organization. Businesses can make projections from the beginning of the year when they have a target profit that, oh, at the end of this year, we want to make a profit of so so million dollars or so so million naira. What unit must we produce and sell? And what will be the cost implication? So it's very critical in budgeting, cost, volume, profit analysis. The subject looks at the relationship between cost, volume, and profit. For instance, if 10% volume change, we are producing 100,000 bags before. But this season, we want to increase and produce 110,000 bags of our products. What will be the expected change in profit? The answer is in cost volume profit analysis. If another question that this subject will help us to answer is this if volume and cost change, what is expected? What is the expected change in profit? If you have been operating at this level before, and then there is a change in the level of activity, and then of course there will be a change in cost. What will be the implication on the level of profitability? As you all know that the objective of every profit-making organization primarily is to make profit and in the long run to enhance the return on shareholders' value. So we're looking at it. Then break-even analysis is a technique of the cost volume profit analysis. Actually, break even is talking about a point in the level of activity of an organization where you are able to cover all your costs without incurring any loss but no profit. That point is key in the life of every profit making organization because until you attain that point, you will be operating at a loss. But the moment you identify that point, and you are able, your level of activity has been increased to reach that point. It means that any operation beyond that point will be any you profit. So under the cost profit volume analysis, we must be able to identify the break-even point where all our costs will be covered, we will not be making any loss, and then we will not be making any profit. Good. Other questions that um, we answer through the use of the cost volume analysis is what level of sales is needed to avoid the loss or the losses, and that is the break even sales value. What sales volume is needed to earn a target profit? At the end of the year, we want to say, okay, we want to arrive at this level of profit. How many quantity of our goods must be sold for us to attain this level of profit at the end of the period? Or what will be the effect on profit if we reduce our selling price and sell more units? You know, it is possible. We're selling price for us, 
using the law of demand and supply, if price, selling price falls, quantity demanded will increase. So we may reduce our selling price and then thereby increasing the total unit that is sold. How will that affect our profit level? These are questions that are answered using the cost volume profit analysis. Also, what sales volume is required to meet the additional fees charges arising from an advertising campaign? An organization, in order to boost its sales, may embark on serious um, advertis advertisement of its products and activities, which will, in a way, increase cost, but also increase revenue by increasing the sales. How do we balance the cost secured on additional advertisement on sales, and how will this affect our profitability? These and so many other questions will be answered using the knowledge that we have derived from the cost volume profit analysis. Good. The other thing we want to look at, we we'll look at the assumptions of cost volume profit analysis. Cost volume profit analysis assumption. The relationship between cost, volume, and profit. For this um, relationship to hold, we have some assumptions, the underlying assumption. The first one is that cost can be divided into fixed and variable cost. You know that sometimes we have some costs called missed cost. Where such cost exists, we must be able to break the missed cost into its fixed and variable element. Otherwise, cost volume profit analysis will be difficult to implement. So it is on the assumption that missed cost can be divided into its fixed and variable element. Another assumption of the cost volume profit analysis is the fact that fixed cost will remain constant under within the relevant range. We want to for cost volume profit analysis to uh, be effective and uh, for the for it to be operational fixed cost must remain uh, constant within the relevant range. Also another assumption assumption three is that variable cost per unit and selling price must remain constant. Even though total variable cost will increase, as you will see later in the, in the lecture, even though total variable cost will increase as volume or activity level increases, notwithstanding, variable cost per unit must remain constant. Also, selling price must also remain constant. Another assumption is that a company produces a single product. Under cost volume profit analysis, for the for it to be operational, it is on the assumption that there is a single product. However, if that organization uh, has multiple products, then the product mix should be constant. In other words, if you have a company producing um, Coke, Fanta, and uh, Sprite, in a crate of 24 bottles, we want to have a constant number of Coke, Fanta, and then Sprite on each crate. So there should be a constant mixture of a uh, product where the organization engages in the production of a mixed product. Another assumption is production equals to sales. In other words, there is no change in inventory. So the total production will be equal to total sales under cost volume profit analysis. And then finally, no change in capacity and productivity. Of course, you will agree with me that some of these assumptions are challengeable. They may not be realistic in real life. For instance, 
In most companies, where the most manufacturing concern, total productions may not be equal to total sales because uh, the production is within the ability of management to decide, but sales is not within their capacity to decide. It is the uh, customer that will determine their level of sales. So sometimes you may have uh, closing stocks and opening stock, which may distort the applicability of cost volume profit analysis. Of course, another assumption which is debatable is the last one, the fact that no change in capacity and productivity. You remember that's what we call learning curve, that when you do the same thing over and over again, you master that thing and then you are able to become more efficient. If I know blog, for instance, and I've, doing it, I've been doing it for the past two years, three years. You just saw that the time it takes me to mold 100 blogs now will be less than the time I used to spend because I become more efficient in the production. So we have some issues that um, we could argue about on some of the assumptions of the cost volume profit analysis. Now, like we said before, break-even analysis is a subset of a cost volume profit analysis. So let's look at break-even analysis. Break-even analysis is a technique of representing and studying the entire relationship of the three basic components of cost volume and profit. It determines the relationship between the revenue and cost with respect to volume. Now, practical analysis is always taken as an important part of profit planning as it gives the planner many insights into the data with, with which he or she is working. As we see later on, the diagrammatic representation of the break-even analysis. Now, so you can the break-even point is that point where the profit is zero. Why is it important that we identify this point? Because operating below this point will mean that the company will be running at a loss. And then operating beyond this point will automatically mean that the company will be operating at a profit. And I know that it is the desire of every profit-making organization to operate at the profit level. So that point where you are able to cover your cost will make no profit. Profit is zero as the total revenue will be equal to the total cost. At that point, that is the break even point. In other words, it is the level of activity in unit or in area at which revenue equals cost. Method of cost volume profit analysis. Now, looking at the various ways of um, discussing cost volume profit analysis, we may look at it from graphical approach using graph. We may use income statement approach. We may use contribution margin or formula approach, and then equation approach. Now, looking at the uh, Let's look at the graphical presentation of uh, the break even point. As you can see on display, we have the cost, the price, and the profit in Naira. And then we have the unit in quantity. If you look at this graph very carefully, at point zero, at point zero, we are not producing anything at this point, but we are incurring fixed cost. So at this point, we have 50,000 naira fixed cost, even though there is no production, no sales, but fixed cost must be incurred. Of 
costs. One of the fee, one of the items of the fees costs include administrative costs. So as long as that organization exists, fees costs must be incurred. So we see at this level, even though we are not producing anything, we are not making any sales, but we cure the fees costs of fifty thousand naira. However, as we begin to make production and sales. At the point of um, 50,000 sales, we discover that we, our cost has increased. We incur the fixed cost and then we incur the variable cost. That is why you have the total cost call along this line, comprising the fixed cost and the variable element. Between this point and this point, you add the variable element, and then between here and here, it's uh, the fixed element. So you have 50,000 plus some variable cost. Now, like we described the break even point, the break even point is a point at which no profit, no loss is made. And on this graph, it is this point where we have our sales revenue line crosses the total cost line. At this point, no profit, no loss. That is the break-even point. Every organization needs to identify this point in its profit planning. It means that at this break-even point, when you trace it down to this axis, you have 150,000 units of the product being sold. It means that if for any reason the company failed to sell up to 150,000 of the quantity of their product, the company will be running at a loss. And that is this area that you see marked down this side. That is at a loss. For the company to break even, it must sell 150,000 quantity of its product. Let's say, for instance, a bag, I mean, a, 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 a rice um, um, producing company selling rice. It must buy 150,000 bags of rice and sell for it to break even. Then, if the company is fortunate to sell more, anything beyond 150,000 will end up in a profit. For instance, if the company is able to sell 200,000 bags in a year, then when you trace it to this point, you are seeing that the total sales revenue is more than the total cost, and then there is a profit. There is a profit. So at this point, companies will begin to make effort to increase their sales revenue so that they can make profit. They, they, they do that through uh, advertisement and some other means. As long as there's, they've crossed this borderline of break even point, any sales at that point will increase the profitability of the company. So we see the um, segmentation of the, pro, of the cost. Even though we have the total cost curve this way, increasing. It was fixed cost 50,000 naira when we are not making any production any sales. But as we begin to make production, our total cost continue to increase up to a point, continue to increase. And this total cost can be grouped into two. We have the fixed element and then the variable element. And remember the assumption. One of the assumptions of cost volume profit analysis is that even though total variable cost increases, variable cost per unit remain constant. Then fixed cost also remain constant. But fixed cost, why total fixed cost remain constant? Fixed cost per unit reduces, it increases as the unit of production also changes. So that is the, then we have um, the sales level from zero and then um, All right, so, so with this, 
it is very easy for profit planning. You can plan the level of your activity with the objective or target profit at the back of your mind. That is a very useful aid on the use of cost volume profit 